Welcome back to The Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, as you know, this week, gunmen carried out a raid on a school in the north-central Nigerian state of Niger, killing a student and abducting another 27. Three members of staff at the school in Kagara town and 12 of their relatives were also abducted, according to officials. In the wake of that attack, there's also been some controversial comments made by Nigeria's Defense Minister Bashir Magashi urging citizens to be alert to the threat of attacks by armed gangs. He told journalists that people should not be cowards when confronted by gunmen. Well, as you can imagine, there have been lots of angry, condemnatory reactions to those comments by Nigeria's Defense Minister. And among those who've been reacting to those comments is the singer, songwriter, television personality, publisher, producer, political activist, social critic, and mass mobilizer Charles Aputa, otherwise known as Charlie Boy. And he joins me now from our studios in Lagos. Uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us, uh, Charlie Boy. First of all, what's your reaction to the latest abduction of school children and others? you know, who are missing and, and are still unaccounted for. <sighs> well, it's the same old story, okay? And this has been going on for a while. When you have a situation that, you know, people who commit crimes, whatever it is, whatever crime that is, they're not held accountable. This is what will keep happening. And uh, taking a second look at it, uh, thinking about it seriously, I want to believe that even terrorism in Nigeria has turned into a transaction, a business. So until the government has the willpower and the political power to move in and hold people. They know the bandits, they know the terrorists, they know them. Until they can hold them accountable. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this is what will keep on happening till it comes to a head, of course. Well, I mean, uh, I, I suppose that people are gonna say, everybody, including yourself, have done a brilliant job of identifying the, the problems, but what's the short-term solution and what's the longer-term solution uh, in your assessment? Because, I mean, it seems like the police and the army just don't seem to be able to get on top of this crisis. Well, how are they going to get on top of this crisis when they are indirectly part of it? Okay? I say that even terrorism, banditry, has become a booming business in Nigeria. And they cannot do that effectively, except they have cover from security agents. We all know that this is what they do in. We all know that if they're determined to quell this down, to stop this insurgency going on, to stop this terrorism, they'll need to do a little more than they're doing. When you have a government that don't seem to see the people, when you have a government that is so insensitive, then these are the, some of the things that you'll see in the environment. Okay, like I said, criminality, terrorism, have all been, is gone transactional in Nigeria. So let's look for who are the people who are aiding these criminals. That's where we start from. Okay. And of course, um, uh, in, in, in the midst of all this, uh, you have the defense minister 
essentially telling citizens to fight back and not to run away if they are attacked by armed men, in effect asking them to <laughs> turn into vigilantes at the risk of their own lives. What's your reaction to that? Well, we understand that we've been warned since the past two, three years ago. We've been warned by different people, yeah, to arm ourselves, protect ourselves. I don't know why it was necessary for them to think that calling us to bring back our arms or whatever, that that was going to work. So we become sitting ducks or what? Okay? Now, since the defense minister has said what he said, which I think is rather irresponsible, I mean, that's just telling us that, well, the government can't take care of us. The security agency can't take care of us. So we should know how we're going to do ourselves and take care of ourselves. So yes, I advocate that every community, every region, should have their own security vigilante or security force because, I mean, hey, we all need to protect ourselves. That's our right. Everybody needs to protect themselves. So he's not saying anything that we don't already know. This trumpet has been sounding for the past three years. Okay? When one general came out to say, Protect yourself. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Protect ourselves because uh, the government has been irresponsible so far. In, in, that, uh, in that process of protecting oneself, I mean, never mind the fact that, you know, the security forces who will regulate that process are unable to regulate the the arms that are in Nigeria at the moment, and obviously this will be increasing the work they have to do. It is your contention, is it, that the law should be amended to allow all Nigerians to bear arms in their own defense? Well, whether we like it or not, the ones who can bear arms will bear arms, whether legally or illegally because I have a duty to protect my home and my family. I have a personal duty from God that I protect my household. And nobody can query that. But you see, violence begets more violence, okay? An eye for an eye will leave everybody blind. That's for sure. So if we keep having governments that are insensitive to the people's plight. I don't know where all of this is going to lead to because you can't, you can't be talking about putting another floor on a building with a faulty foundation. We need to address that foundation first and foremost. We need to go back to the constitution and look at, is, it, is this constitution for the common man on the street? Why are we not held to the same standard that some other people occupy? Why? So this is what we need to do, because I believe that the worst is yet to come. It, it, it will get worse before it gets better. I was just talking to my son just this morning. And he said, Dad, for the last 30 years, you've been complaining, isn't anything getting better there? But what, why are you still there? What are you still doing? I couldn't answer the later question. This is my country. Nobody's going to run me out of this country. Nobody. So what I got to do, I got to do. Oh, uh I mean, talking, I don't talking, think... about, talking about the things that need to be done, um, and some of which you've enumerated uh, quite well there, um, let, let's start with taking responsibility um, on the part of government in the circumstances of what's the 
Nigerian defense minister said, which were clearly provocative to a lot of people, what do you think should happen to him? I mean, should he resign or be forced to resign by President Buhari, or do you think it's all going to blow over? <laughs> um, um, oh my God. When we have a cacophony of mediocrity, when you have people who are not really leaders, they're only there to, for whatever they can get or whatever their agenda is. This is what you will keep seeing, okay? Nobody resigns in Nigeria. Nobody is held accountable in Nigeria. Even when the chief of police goofs, he's not held accountable. Even when the army chief goofs, he's not held accountable. So for how long is this going to keep going on? That people who, on whose watch, that a lot of negative things are happening, are not held accountable. Forget about resigning, nobody resigns here. Not in Africa, not to talk about Nigeria, you know? So when people are not held accountable, to their stewardship, this is what happens. You'll have an environment, a toxic environment that is filled with all manner of people and usually criminals, criminals, yes. So now it's gotten to a head, how do we get rid of them? Because we're not all criminals, we're not all bad. But certain people, certain region has decided to lord it over certain region. And certain people would rather die in power than just simply do the right thing. So it's an unfortunate situation, but this is where we find ourselves. And like as I said, except we need to bring down this house, fix the faulty foundation, fix the, the scam that is called the Constitution. Look at what happened in America. I mean, you remember January the 6th. That could have been a bloodbath, okay? Because somebody was going around with the lies that they won election. They should know better. But America was able to survive. I, I don't care who becomes the American president. What I'm interested in is to see that, yes, the Greece started democracy, America promoted it, okay? All I know is that democracy won on the 6th of January. It was democracy won that won. Now, I know that <laughs> before then, a lot of African leaders have been, well, this is what they're used to, but seeing the fact that the America the Great has started sleeping, okay, and started going into very, very dark places. Thank God for Trump for that. If it wasn't for the system, the strong system in the U.S. of A, America couldn't have withstood what happened on 6th of January because that was intended to be a blood bath. And until we start to take personalities out of the equation in Nigeria and start refortifying our system and our institution, we'll still, go, we'll still keep going around in circles. Well, that's, that's a very good point you made there, the fact that institutions must be strengthened. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the maverick entertainer and veteran activist Charlie Boy and his reflections on the latest bout of insecurity in Nigeria. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Now in the midst of the latest attack on a secondary school in the north central region of Nigeria, the country's defense minister tells citizens to fight back and not to run away if they are attacked by armed men. 
in effect asking them to turn into unarmed vigilantes at considerable risk to their own lives. And we've been getting reaction to all that, an assessment of the current situation in Nigeria from my guest, the maverick entertainer and veteran activist Charles Aputa, known to millions as Charlie Boy. He is, of course, a popular singer-songwriter, social critic, and mass mobilizer who has consistently tried to explore and explain the world Nigerians live in through his works and the voice of his art, albeit in an unorthodox, unconventional, rather non-conformist way. A public figure who identifies with the case and cause of the masses, even if he doesn't always live up to their own idea of who he is. And Charlie Boy is still with me from our studios in Lagos. So thank you for staying with us. Um, you are, of course, someone who follows and examines the events and the evolving conditions in Nigeria closely. You often uh, do this through your music and your art. For instance, your music video, God of Men, Fake Pastors, is a sort of protest song taking aim at the men of God who you say have become the gods of men. So let me ask you this. How is it that Nigeria is at once one of the most religious and one of the most violent countries in the world? And that's a line I took from my previous guest, uh, John Campbell's book. <laughs> Quite simple. We're a bunch of hypocrites who really don't mean what we say. We really... We really, we, we, we're always walking around with a mask, okay? Nigerians are not the most religious people. Their religion is not more than this. It's just a surface thing, okay? And Pentecostalism in Nigeria is part of our problem. Where, because people are traumatized, People have lost hope. They've lost hope in their government. They've lost hope in the community. They've lost hope, period. So they turn to the churches for soccer. They turn to the churches for some kind of, you know, a hopefulness towards their future. They can't even get that because most of the pastors are also transactional. It's not, about, it's not about being the best motivational speaker. No, it's really about saving the soul. It's really about, you know, teaching people a new way of life, how to cope with their challenges, how to be drawn closer to God. That's what it is. It's not about, you know, making people believe that out of nothing, because all, all most of the congregation are waiting for is for miracles, uh, blessings, and all of that. How, how, how can you be praying for a job when you're not even applying for a job? Or when you're sitting in your house and you're not making any effort to go find you a job. The days of miracles are over, okay? So any pastor who comes down with all that fancy talk is not, is not really doing what a pastor should do, okay? And if you're a pastor, please get another job because that should be a part-time thing. But it's full-time for them. Because they're making a lot of money. If you have, uh, if you have 100 pastors and 100 churches in Nigeria, take it from me, 95 of those churches and pastors, rubbish. They're all fake people. All they want is your money, your pocket. And that's why I did the song. And that's why I called them, you know, God of men. Because people... I've seen the people respect their pastors more than they respect the Almighty God. They listen to their pastors more than they will listen to God. So what's up with that? 
What's really up with that? That is part of our problem. And pastors and funny politicians are in, in the same bed. They know what they're doing. All they know is just to keep, keep messing with the people's mind. It's bad as it is. So I don't need, I mean, <laughs> if you want my money, just say so. Don't, 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 don't come and trick me into uh, uh, something that I know nothing of, okay? And that's why I'm really upset with the uh, uh, Nigerian pastors, with the Pentecostalism that is going on. If you want to be a man of God, be like Reverend, uh, be like, yes, Reverend Bishop Kuka, who is always speaking against evil. Right. Because there's it's, a lot uh, of evil uh, that's pamblating uh, in this atmosphere. Right. Uh, Charlie Boy, you, you've raised a lot of very interesting points there. And I think one very interesting thing you said was the fact, and I've noticed that as well, that a lot of people sit around waiting for miracles and, and don't actually go there, including those who say they don't have jobs. They don't actually go to uh, apply for jobs. Um, do, do you... Those are telling them this is the mindset. This is how they brainwash them that you can get something out of nothing. Right. That doesn't happen. So, so let me ask you this then, uh, Charlie Boy. Do, do you find yourself grappling sometimes with the influence that you have on younger people? Because you've got a lot of followers. I mean, as time passes, do you still think that you have an important message for the youth of this country? I'll always have an important message, but sometimes my heart bleeds. Because when young people come to me, you know, I'm faced with, do I just tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Or do I just keep encouraging you to keep, you know, keep striving? It's a bad place for me to, to be in sometimes. Okay? And I, I keep looking at this. I, I, I've met... I've met young people that I have learned from, that has encouraged me to even be on this lane, to keep talking, to never stop talking. Because at 71, going to 71, what else can I do, really? What else can I do? Except to keep saying, no, this, I don't think this is the way. I think we should do this. I think we should do that, you know? And it's so sad because it's no fault of theirs that they've been bequitted a country that is a failed state, more or less. Okay? But I keep saying to them that regardless of what kind of country you've been handed down to, it is your responsibility because you live in it. It's your responsibility to see how you're going to have to make it work, if not for yourself for the future of your children. I don't know how that is going to happen. But that has to be my message. We can't give up. Give up for what? We might as well roll over and then, hey, let uh, the terrorists do, do what they do. Uh, delight in plundering and killing na fellow Nigerians. And then the government who sit and fold their hands and say, you know, okay, let us just pray. Pray. Well, uh, pray I have again. to say, um, Charlie Boy, uh, it's always a pleasure talking with you. And um, I don't know what you do. I mean, you said you're 71. <laughs> you don't look a day over 40. I'm, so I'm whatever it is you're doing, let me know. I'd like June. to do it too. <laughs> Charlie Boy, talking to me from our studios in Lagos. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja, Lagos and Washington. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.